When God became incarnate in Jesus, we are told that Jesus experienced the very same kind of heartache and suffering without sin, I admit, but Jesus was finite and he was subjected to thirst and hunger, to aggression, to hostility, to tragedy. And when Jesus stretched his hands out on the cross, he was saying, I love you this much. I love you so much it hurts. I love you so much I'd rather die than live without you. And those nails that went through the palms of Jesus went straight into the heart of God. There's a wonderful hymn which we sometimes sing, which has a line, and when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, then they find that self-same aching deep within the heart of God. And that's a wonderful sense. God in Christ has been here. He has taken it. He knows what it's like. He is not unable to sympathize. He is on all fours with us. I mean, Jesus was the most God-forsaken man who ever lived, so that he might in turn tell us, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. That tells me God feels, he empathizes, he cares about my pains. He, he felt the sting in his chest first, and that encourages me when I hurt. In 1944, Corey Tamboon, a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp, considered the full measure of God's participation in the suffering of humanity. While clinging to life in the shadow of ultimate evil, she concluded, there is no pit so deep that the love of God is not deeper still. There's a famous passage in Elie Wiesel's book, Night, where he recalls uh, being in a concentration camp and seeing uh, a line of people being hanged and a little boy is one of the people being hanged and he's so light that he doesn't die immediately because his neck doesn't break and he's dangling there half dead and half alive and the crowd are being forced to watch this and somebody suddenly says, where is God, where is God? And somebody else says, there he is, he's hanging from that noose. That's the answer to the question that's often asked, where was God in Auschwitz? Where was God in, in Darfur? He was there. He was in the gas chambers. Yes, the incarnation means that he descends into the whole of the human condition. God is there at the heart of the mess and taking the worst onto himself. That's what we believe when we think about Jesus. And that's why ultimately we have hope. It makes me feel there's a certain kind of kinship that God gets it, that God understands. He's been there. He doesn't just have the facts straight. That's omniscience. He has entered into the experience of it, and that's something entirely different. He knows exactly how I feel. There is no pain that I'm going through paralyzed. He was even paralyzed on the cross. That tells me he identifies, and that, for me, is enough. <laughs>